everyone. Welcome to another episode of Not Too Deep. I'm your host, Grace Helbig. I'm very excited to have actress, comedian, writer, all around incredible, philanthropic, activist, wonderful lady human, Jen Lyon, on today's episode. Jen and I actually go all the way back to early, early YouTube days. I'm talking like 2010. 2009 uh, in her sketch comedy group Poik Pack. Maybe you guys from the uh, beginning stages of the internet remember them. Uh, we talk all about that. We talk about uh, life in the pandemic. We talk about Claws, the show that she stars on on TNT and how it's getting into its final season. Uh, nail art we talk about in relation to Claws and how that really is a window into a human soul. We talk about everything. Uh, it's She's just such a delight. She's so easy to talk to it just so lovely and truly so fucking funny so please please enjoy this episode of not too deep with jen lyon Jen, I'm so excited to talk to you. I mean, you're uh, one of the multi-hyphenates, which, what's your relationship to that word? Murderer, dancer, (laughs) schemer, (laughs) the triple threat. Yeah, con artist, (laughs) philanthropist. um. Baker. You just, you know what a triple threat is. You know, if you know, you know. Yeah. What's, um... But I'm wondering, because uh, I've had this conversation recently with people that that work in entertainment, that do a lot of different things. Do you find the word multi-hyphenate um, the right way to describe you? It depends on how embarrassing it is to say I'm an actor. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It depends on like yeah. the company I'm keeping. Like if it's like a physicist I'm meeting, I'll be like, I'm a writer. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> totally. But if it's a bunch of other actors, I'll be like, Dude, I totally auditioned to be that fruit roll-up too. I can't believe you got it. <laughs> You're so good though. I know what they wanted. Yeah. Well, I first um, heard of you uh, in association with Poik Pack. Um, yeah, and you, oh my gosh. Do you remember we went to this like party together? It was like a probably. My Damn Channel birthday party or something. Yeah, that sounds about <laughs> right. I'm sure yeah. I buried that very deep down in my brain. Yeah, uh, but and for then people, I remember us being by the dip. Uh huh. We were by one the of my dip, favorite places like, to be. <laughs> is there a better? It's the fucking. It's the event horizon of the party. A hundred percent. And we were by the dip, and we were just like eating carrots and eating dip. And I remember thinking, like, she is so gorgeous and self possessed. Why can't I stop chewing? <laughs> No, uh, maybe self-obsessed or something. I don't know. Okay. But uh, I remember this was back when I lived in Brooklyn. It was like at the start of figuring out what digital content <laughs> even was or looked like. Yeah. And, and especially in New York, there was hardly anyone doing it. And Poik Pack was one of these groups that was just like they seemed so confident in like what they were doing. Um, how do you explain Poik Pack, I mean, it's, I, I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly. Neither, do, I mean, you are. My mom, to this day, is like, well, now why don't you and Pork Pie make another movie? <laughs> so it's fine. It, stood, it was like an acronym. It stood for um, pictures of your kids pooping and crying. Wow. And we just adopted it and never thought we would have any sort of traction. <laughs> so, but then we got stuck with it. I wanted, I think I remember being like, I would like for us to be called the Wings of Larry Bird. And everybody was like, <laughs> no. But now we're, quite, I don't know, it's fine. But we didn't, you know, it's like, you know, we were on YouTube before there was like a glut of online comedy. Yeah. So it just felt really, we were just very excited to make things. Yeah. And it felt like you guys were just, there was no kind of like ego of like having to do things in the traditional route you know there was just kind of like we have some equipment and some of us know how to use it and we have this light that uh, lights us fine and we're gonna do it it was like the youtube version of like judy garland and mickey rooney being like well my uncle's got a barn and my aunt's got a step you know a curtain so like we just did it like we borrowed somebody's dvr ryan was from school of the arts so was johnny tage knew how to edit ryan knew how to edit I knew how to boss everyone around (laughs) and make snacks. You know, Maggie was so funny and so weird and was a great writer. And like Ryan Hall was so great. And we just, 
didn't know any better. You know how like yeah. you're young enough that you just don't know any better to be scared? Yeah, there's kind of there's that magic. Um, yeah, that exact feeling of not having enough experience to yeah. build up an anxiety about the things that you're doing very deeply. <laughs> yeah, like you, I think about the audition rooms I used to walk into with like, like these huge musicals that I had no business like I can sing like I'm in church, but like, I can't sing like these fucking rock gods in yeah. this musical. And I would go in, put my music to the accompanist and be like, give me a C, a bouncy C. <laughs> and would like sing in a very mediocre way. But like, yeah. I just was like, why not me? You know, yeah. and then as you get older, I feel like I became very aware of like my body's ability to just fail. And, oh, and then I same. got scared later. Yeah, same. Well, okay. I want to go back to the beginning, how you got into entertainment. I yeah. know that uh, your dad is a pastor. And yeah. so you grew up in church. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of this institution. <laughs> I grew up Catholic. And then You're after like, I got my say church, ch- church um, mm-hmm. and, there's, and they go every week and they meet. Um, what was that like? Well, you know, I think being indoctrinated early is important. (laughs) Um, No, it's like, I don't know what anything else is like, you know, and like my little Catholic friends are like, you went to church on Wednesday too and Friday. And cause like, (laughs) cause when your dad's the preacher, you're just there all the time. Mm -hmm. Like if, if we couldn't find a babysitter, I'd go to the funeral that he was doing, you know, like we're just always at church and your dad's like always upholding a religion and kind of in a fishbowl, but you are raised by a community that is loving, but also Mm -hmm. thinks they know how you should be. So it's a very watchful eye, you know? Was there anything about your, your dad being the pastor and, you know, delivering sermons that kind of like informed an interest in entertainment in any way? Because I've always thought that like, you know, I grew up Catholic, but it never stuck for me, but I was always like, wow, some uh priests are way more entertaining at this job than others dude my dad is like he's not a fire and brimstone preacher he's like this Mm -hmm. elegant storyteller and he uses all these sort of um acting techniques like he'll he like makes you lean in (laughs) like when the story gets really good because he like weaves all these stories together and then when it gets really good he'll back off whoa like you almost get to the apex of a story and, and he'll be like and cordelia said it was a dark morning in Kansas <laughs> when the dog came from the cabin. And you're like, what happened to Cordelia? And then at the wow. end, he like weaves it all together, never mm-hmm. uses notes. Like this wow. motherfucker is like the Jordan of yeah. Methodist ministers. And he's my dad. Like That's I felt very cool about it. Very cool. And also like, uh, how could that not inform you of like wanting to be an entertainer in some capacity? Yeah, yeah, it really did. And my mom was in the choir. So like your dad's watching you and he's doing his show and your mom's doing her show, but she's got her eye on you too. (laughs) And they could like, they just like could incorporate your name in a way that would make you behave. You know, my brother was there too. And like, you know, he'd be like, and that's when Jesus said, Jennifer, that (laughs) we can come together. And we'd be like, (gasps) (laughs) And so, and I wanted to sing, I wanted to, and you, I think basically all the things we do early on Mm -hmm. are to gain our parents' love and acceptance and survive in the world, you know, and that, and my parents liked it when I did it and we moved a lot. So that's how I survived in the world. What about you? Like, why did you do it? No, I mean, it's very family oriented same that like my brothers were so funny and they like made each other laugh so effortlessly. And so that was like our uh like communication value of like exchange of communication was yes, when you could make yeah when you could make someone laugh in the family and it just like yeah. stuck and became this like unconscious inherent thing in all of us to always try to make all all of us laugh um yeah. and yeah it really does stick with you did you you went to college for uh theater Yeah, I went to a couple. I went to one college and I got kicked out and then I went to community (laughs) college and then I went to School of the Arts. I got in there. I auditioned and I went there for theater. Yeah. 
Very cool. What was the theater community like? Because I don't, I, I, until I got to like improv world, I never really felt like part of a theater theater. I mean, I can't yeah. sing and I always felt like that was kind of a requirement to be oh. in that group. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. I mean, I get that. But like, there's so much theater that doesn't involve music. True. And um, I think, you know, like I remember doing community theater. I like auditioned for Godspell in High Point, Mm. North Carolina when I was like 15. Yeah. And I got cast as the Mary Magdalene role, which is like very alto and she's kind of sexy and stuff. And they had to call my dad and ask for permission. Wow. And he said yes. And I was like, and I got to go do this show and I met my first like very catty queen gay men. I met my yeah. first, I was like, people are gay in the church, but like, ain't nobody saying it and nobody's right. out and whatever. <laughs> but I met my first like unabashedly out and like authentically weird people. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to be anywhere else as long as I live. And they were so <laughs> clever. They were fucking devastating. Yeah. And I was like, if I could be this kind of person, that's what I want to do. And so I came into the theater world and I got to do the best regional theater, like the best. We always think of theater as like Broadway or musicals, but like right. some of the times I've been moved the most has been watching theater in like, like Seattle or some weird mm. place in North Carolina or like Gretna, which is near, you know, it's in Louisiana. And like, you see, you're like sitting in the dusty dark space watching a story take place. and it is it just transports you, you yeah. know? And I really like that. And I like that it evaporates. Mm, that's very interesting. That's a cool way to put it. The yeah. What was it like to go from regional theater to go to New York and then try yeah. and do whatever yeah. the next level is? Um, it just like, it just goes. Like you yeah. don't, it doesn't, it's not linear like everybody thinks it is. You know how everybody thinks like you get like, a guest star or recurring, and then you're a series regular <laughs> yeah, on TV. Yeah. That just and you're how, like, that's how it you're like, I did this, then I was vastly unemployed. And then I did this. And that, you know, it's like you, I mean, once you get on Broadway, it's certainly easier to get on Broadway again. But yeah. it just happens because you're just auditioning so much. And I was getting cast for regional theater out of New York. So I would like to leave oh, New okay. York and go to Seattle or go to California or whatever. And then just auditioning for stuff. Yeah, what's a theater audition like? I don't think I've ever experienced it. Oh, Grace, you really got to use that your whole body. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I have a very mind body disconnect, so I don't know if it's going to work for me. <laughs> well, first, going to be the life for you. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you've done like improv and stuff. Yeah, that kind of stuff uh, makes sense to me, but only in short bursts. But like to audition yeah. for something that you will be doing again and again and again and again uh it's so fascinating yeah eight shows a week like I remember when I was doing Larry David's Broadway show yeah when he realized it's like someone told him that it would be eight shows a week but we were leaving the theater on like a Tuesday night and the stage manager was like see you tomorrow afternoon and he was like tomorrow afternoon (laughs) we were like yeah we got two on Wednesdays and two on Saturdays and he's like two (laughs) And we were like, I know you know what your contract says. There's, yeah, there's no way you don't understand this. But like, he's so used to, we'd be, we'd be backstage, like, because we would be together right before the show opened yeah. and I had to get an elder or whatever. And he'd be like, like a month into the run. And it was a long run. He eventually yeah. left and Jason Alexander replaced it. He was great. But we, it was like a month in and Larry David was like, what do I have to do to not do the show tonight? Just hypothetically. <laughs> And we'd be like, a, a grievous injury, babe. Like, yeah. you, have, you have to do it. This is, yeah. Uh, did he have an understudy at all? He did, but like, listen, if you go to see the Beatles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would be, uh, yeah. I mean, it would be the most Larry David move of all time just oh. to have his understudy fill in for him all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. It would be, it, w- it really would be, but like, Dude, we would come out of the like the stage door. Mm-hmm. Also, during the show, people would yell out his name. That's why I said the Beatles. People would yell out wow. his name. They were crazy. They'd be like, <laughs> in the middle of a quiet scene, be like, Larry! <laughs> Yeah, because I guess his audience base doesn't necessarily understand theater etiquette, I guess. Dude, they have tattoos of him on their calves. (laughs) Like, that shit is 
crazy. They are crazy about it. He would get <laughs> stacks of fan mail. Wow. And he'd be like, I don't want to look, I don't want to look at it. So it can be so <laughs> creepy. And I was like, let me read every one. Seriously. Let me read it. And I'll tell you if one is too creepy not to be ignored. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of them, he got so many bar mitzvah invitations. Wow. So much artwork, <laughs> dedicated artwork. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It was, <gasps> yeah, it was good. I still have some of it because I was like, I can't, this is too good to pass up. You, yeah, you have to. I mean, if he's passing it up, I mean, can you imagine finding that in a dumpster in New York somewhere? <laughs> and I kept worrying about people like, Maybe yeah. they would they would go by and see that their missive had been trashed. Uh, and I, I kept it in my dressing room. I kept stacks <laughs> of stuff because I was like, I just don't want people's feelings to be hurt. You just accidentally became his co-star and assistant <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> Basically. Oh, but a theater audition, you use your whole body. And it's terrifying. Mm-hmm. And now that I've been doing film and TV for so long, like, yeah. And now that we've been self-taping for so long, too, I'm like. Mm. The lower half of my body feels like taffy. I, it doesn't even work. <laughs> I don't even know. Well, I do. Okay, we we have to take a quick break. Um, but I want to talk to you all about claws when we get back. Because okay. um, I have so many questions about it. We'll be right back with more Not Too Deep after this. Not Too Deep with Grace Heidbeck. Hello, listeners. Grace Helbig here. Wanting to say two things. A big thank you for listening to the podcast. Uh, If you're a regular listener, if this is your first time listening, welcome and thank you. And uh, second thing, if you are enjoying yourself here in this not too deep world we've built and you'd like to leave us a review, that would be so wonderful. If you can go to the iTunes store, the app store and leave us a lovely little review comment. How are you feeling? Good, bad, otherwise? Maybe just good or otherwise would be appreciated. Other than that, enjoy the podcast. I want to talk to you, speaking of all the the TV filming that you've been doing, Claws, TNT, yeah. this is so cool. How did this happen? Tell, Walk me through it. Well, it is so glamorous, Grace. I auditioned. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, I auditioned. And then I went to work at the pizza shop. And then I got a call back. <laughs> and then I went to that. And then they were like, we want to fly you out to test with Nisi. And I flew out, I tested with Nisi and I loved her so much. And she was so tiny in real life. Like I'm always blown away by how little everybody is. Yeah. Because I'm actually not, I'm an actual size person. And then when I'm with everybody else, I'm like, why is everybody so little? Well, I guess maybe that is an actual size for them, isn't it? (laughs) But I get it. I'm five foot nine. And so like any time, and I'd have to lie in auditions uh, that I was shorter because most male, like who would be playing your husband or boyfriend or whatever it is, are usually on average. Exactly. And so (laughs) it's like, so strange. Like the only time in my life I have to pretend I'm shorter right now. Would you say five, six or five, seven? I'd say like, I'd honestly say like five, eight, because I was like, good girl. Grace was too afraid of being outed as like, you're lying to us. <laughs> you're deceitfully tall. Uh, yeah. No, I just, this is my posture is always <laughs> hunched over two inches. Yeah, I'm Maybe five, eight. Fine. And I feel like I'm a fucking beast. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, the boys are small too. Uh, yeah. It does make you feel like you're in the wizard of Oz sometimes when you're going to audition <laughs> to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> The um okay, so you flew out here and yeah. you have a, a chemistry test with her? Yeah. Cool. And we did the scenes and I just liked her so much. And then I flew home and was like, oh, I fucking hope I get this. Like, yeah. wouldn't that be great? <laughs> so and wouldn't great. I not smell like pepperoni for a moment? <laughs> and and then I got it. I got the pilot. And Amazing. it was like so collaborative it's, it was a, it's a it has been a dream and everybody is so great even yeah. the, uh, all the crew like we had like the same crew basically we, that did the oh, pilot and everybody is so funny and so weird and so yeah. capable of like laughing at themselves and like you just become this family and it, it is like I wish I had some shitty fucking curly gossip <laughs> You know, no, but I don't. It's just, everybody's great. It seems like a show where it's like really 
interesting and complex female characters get to be authentically themselves, which yeah. and like have fun doing it. And you uh, get to eat food and be on TV. I was like, this is revolutionary. <laughs> Yeah. Does anyone else know about this? This should be more of the standard. Yeah. Now, were you, I mean, how do you summarize the show for people that aren't fully aware of it? I say it's Breaking Bad, but make Mm -hmm. it fashion. I love that. In a, in a salon, <laughs> there's crime, there's adventure. Yeah. There's... I'm just like, it's like these five nail techs and they unwittingly get drawn into the drug trade. Yeah. Fun. You know? Yeah. It's so fun. And everybody is so good. It's just, yeah. whenever I'm in a, you know, you're in scenes with everybody and you just like, when it's their coverage and you're like off camera and watching them, you're just like, Jesus Christ, you're so fucking good. Oh, that's so sweet. I mean, it just yeah. makes it feel like you guys are making something really great together. Yeah, that's what it feels like. And then off camera, we just get in trouble all the time. Everybody's Cute. like, shut up. We're rolling. Because we just <laughs> laugh and play so hard, too hard. Sometimes I play too hard in the van on the way to set. And then I feel very nauseous and I, and I don't Uh-oh. do good acting. <laughs> yeah, that's your... Uh pop-up video like behind the scenes uh information is like i was uh, about to throw up in this scene yeah like you know how you like have to do something emotional and you blow it in the wide you know there's gonna be medium somebody else's coverage whatever and you fucking yeah. blow it you all your tears are gone by the time it gets to you sometimes mm-hmm. i play it so hard on the way somewhere that when i get to the event i don't have any gas <laughs> And they're like, we have to work on this. <laughs> it's yeah. not helping the show right now. So sometimes now, I'd be like, you guys, we're playing too hard and I'm going to... And they'd be like, Are you, do you feel nauseous? And I'd be like, a little. Let's just calm down. <laughs> I used to throw up at school for the same reason. <laughs> just for playing too hard. I'll play too hard, get too excited, and throw up, and then not get to have a birthday party. <laughs> oh, that's great. There's... um. So when you're doing, you're going into this show that's about nail techs, were you a nail conscious person before this? I liked them, but I, I, they were nubby. You know what I mean? Like I would get nails every once in a while. It was like a special occasion, but my own hands have known manual labor. You know what I mean? Like they're (laughs) not, there's a lot of scarring and it's just gross. Cause I was a baker. There's like a lot of little Uh, bones and like whatever. And, um, so or I'd like do press on nails before I had an audition or something. Yeah. Uh, but then we went to nail school and we really learned how to do nails. Did, they really, they had you guys all go to nail school. Yeah. We took from Beatty, the black nail tech in <gasps> New Orleans. She is so fabulous. You get blessed by Beatty if you're ever oh in New Orleans. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. And she like taught us how to do, um, for like, well, right now I have a full set. Wow. And I can do them at my house if I amazing. want. I have gel system. I can do whatever. I still go to the shop if I want something like super, Sure. detailed and nice but i did these because i had to do a um photo shoot thing and um yeah they're not they're not sweet look at them close no hey i'm a i'm a nail biter so i'm always like so look oh, these are yeah. just like you know those look they, like little war of the world <laughs> i say i got et fingers yeah you really did yeah and it looks like <laughs> i've just like been through some shit lately but this is my entire life is what they look like so when they're nice people are like are you okay is everything okay but like what yeah. an amazing thing that you one get this awesome gig and then two get to learn this really incredible craft because yeah, of it's it. so yeah it's so cool like it's just very cool and it does make you conscious of other people's nails yeah you oh, know like, i I'm guess sure. if you worked at a shoe shop you right. look at everybody's nail shoe shop shoe That's store a, either one shoe shop, shoe shop, sounds shoe fun. shop. that sounds more fun you, to say <laughs> yeah i guess you look at people's feet more Probably. Oh, I, I, yeah. And now I do. I, I look at people's nails and I wonder like what their habits are and what they mm. like. Like it's it's a window into what is like what's of value to you at that moment. You know, totally. The uh, and you guys are going into your last season. We did it. We filmed it. It's wrapped. It's wrapped. OK. And it premieres. We think in the fall, it usually okay. it's a summer show, but they like didn't want to compete with the Olympics. And makes sense. You know, and I guess maybe because. Corona was sort of less, pre- it's like before we knew about the Delta variant. And right, right, right. They were like, everybody's going to be out. Like we want it to air when more people will be home and maybe we'll all get shut down again and everybody will be home. 
Right. That's true. Is it a bittersweet feeling knowing that the final season is, is wrapped? Just bitter. (laughs) (laughs) It'll be sweet when everyone gets to see it. I'm curious what the fan base is like for the show. So fucking great. Like they are so involved that they ride or die for whoever they love. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they'll get mad at your character for doing things. Do you know what I mean? And I have to be like, has and anyone you know come written, up to you? <laughs> yeah. Right. Like I, I'm not capable of making another decision. I that was written. <laughs> yeah. You know, nobody ever comes up to me. I never get recognized. Never. Wow. Well, it's also we none of us have been around each other in the last year. Yeah, plus. but it's been going for a while. I think I look <laughs> more beautiful in the show. I have so much hair. Right. A lot I of know. lashes. That hair seems like how long is hair and makeup for you? Well, it's a wig on a wig. That's two wigs. That's crazy. Is your neck okay? <laughs> <laughs> Just fine. Yeah. We, um, yeah, it's like, oh gosh, hair and makeup takes. Well, like for Judy, who plays Quiet Anne, hair and makeup doesn't yeah. take that long. Sure. Because her skin's so flawless and she just gets like tattoos. But for me, it does take a while because there's a level of spackle that has to happen. <laughs> That's so fun, though. It, it makes really it is fun. I feel like a real character. Yeah. And our makeup crew is so great. And they are and they're so collaborative. You know, like Karuchi is usually right beside me in the makeup chair. And I can hear her like talking to Stephen or Ashley or being like, I'm interested in having pearls here and here <laughs> and maybe a two diamonds. Right there. You know, and I'm like, Amazing. oh, my God, I can't believe. So Amazing. it's so weird. Like, hopefully you know i mean not hopefully but like regretfully but the next show i am on will be like something gritty and no makeup and oh polar I'll be opposite. Sad. of yeah. course of course um okay jen i have to move into the two questions that i ask every single guest uh that is on the podcast mm-hmm. um and the first is who alive or dead would you most like to throw cold spaghetti at Alive or dead. Alive or dead. And it can also be any intention of the throw that you would like. So it doesn't necessarily have to be perceived as like a negative thing. Sure, sure, sure. Because that person could sort of like the sensation. Yeah. I guess maybe Tucker Carlson. And I feel like he oh, would hate yeah. it. Yeah. And he would feel disrespected. And <laughs> as much as I want to have nuanced conversations, I also would love to cover him in like a fucking sticky pasta. I honestly would love to see that. I feel like that uh, human is a very disconnect from shame and embarrassment. And I would just love to watch the yeah. him experience it on some level. Me too. Me too. Uh, the other question I ask every single guest is to tell us your worst pants shitting story or like a bathroom emergency. Uh, but you can only use three words or three small phrases to describe the event. So for example, mine is college jogging front lawn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Musical. Okay. (laughs) It's appropriate. (laughs) Corset. Corset. Okay. Tights. <laughs> I won't ask you any follow up questions, but okay. that does really, uh, you know, anything for the role. <laughs> it wasn't scripted. And it also taught me not to eat. All. It taught me that like sugar free candy is not your friend. No, it is not. That Nothing is- sugar free is your friend. If uh, there's a there's a whole meme from years ago that the uh, sugar free or fat free gummy bears that were being sold on Amazon, yeah. um, all of the reviews are just like this made my butt explode while I was at the <laughs> office. <laughs> And it's just people, hundreds and hundreds of people describing how they couldn't believe how awful their digestive system reacted to these gummy bears. It's still around? (laughs) Yeah. And then people started actually buying them as pranks for other people because they just look like gummy bears. I love... It's I wonderful. love reviews. I mean, yeah. I, sometimes I just read oh, reviews and reviews of things that people are upset about. Totally. And they're still there. Highly recommend. They are beyond <laughs> specific and uh, frustrated. Oh, my God. Uh, I can't wait. Yeah. Um, okay. Now we have a section called Deep and Hot, 
where I ask you one deep question and oh. then ask you for your hot take on a topic that I have for you. Okay. So deep question is, why do you think we say things to ourselves that we would never say to those we love? I think it starts as a protective measure mm. and a survival skill. Mm -hmm. Like we think it's going to keep us in line or push us towards some self that we yeah. want to be. And um, yeah, we th it's like this little army sergeant that lives inside of you. that's going to like keep you in line and yeah, turn yeah, you yeah. into something, but it's so fucking devastating. Yeah. It's I'm, I'm learning in my adult life to speak more gently to myself because I, you Me know, too. sometimes, yeah, sometimes you don't even realize how awful you are to yourself in your own head until you start like saying it out loud. And yeah, you're, you're it's like, violent. Yeah, you're like, I think I seem like a nice person, but if people knew what I was saying in my head to myself, Ooh, it would be uncomfortable for it others is bad in there it's very bad yeah. Yeah. i have to say it out loud i do and then my yeah. husband tage who you know yeah um is always like babe but you know what he doesn't have an internal dialogue like that monologue he doesn't have it yeah i know i have the shoulds could have uh next I'm like, time How do you order yeah. your life don't you think like oh i should go to bed i should eat this yeah. i should do that and he's like no oh huh. God, so that must be beautiful. Well, what's in there? What <laughs> in, what is in there? I know sometimes I wish that we could just have projector screens of what how yeah. other people think about things because like it's so hard for me to imagine that kind of um, you know uh, problem free inner dialogue uh, consistently. You know? Yeah, I feel like in his head it's just always like then I saw her face. <laughs> no, I don't believe it. Like I don't. I'm like, what else? How do you not? Oh, I love that. Um, okay. Now a hot take. And this is mm -hmm. one of the things I think is so cool is that you are a very, um, a, not, a, not outspoken, but just like spoken person on social media and, and using platforms to raise awareness and have dialogues and conversations about really important things. What's your take on people that think that artists or actors should just be <laughs> artists and actors and not bother having opinions about other things? Well, I'm not sure like when being an artist or an actor ceased to make you a person. Yeah. Like I'm not like, why does, does a lawyer get to have an opinion? Does a plumber get to have an opinion? Right. Does a grocery store checkout girl get to have an opinion? Like w we do a job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. and most actors and artists are working class. We're yeah. living paycheck to paycheck too. Like maybe the top, top, top percent mm -hmm. of actors and artists like don't have to fucking scramble to pay their rent. But yeah. most of us do. And yeah. I just think that that's a real disconnect and that maybe if they knew that it would change their mind. But also even the top percentage of people, like they're still allowed to have their opinion. They're still it's like this sort of like bad othering that we do. That's, yeah. Yeah, totally. Do you ever struggle with the idea of um, be of saying something that you think versus uh, I'm maybe this maybe I shouldn't do that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, just because. Or it just know, seems like you, it seems like the way that you maintain your social media is very like you give back to others. You present yeah. like you're so supportive of like friends in projects and then also yeah. like community activism. And like, you know, it seems like you're always doing something to give back in some capacity and you yeah. run your social media more about others than yourself. Uh, yeah, I want to. I mean, you know, I've got the deep, ceaseless void inside yeah. <laughs> that, is, uh, that I have found is not very well filled by drugs and alcohol uh, yeah. or dudes or fucking mm -hmm. whatever we use to fill it. But like it does get filled if I am of service to the world around me. Yeah. And whether that's being funny or working at a food pantry or volunteering somewhere, or, I mean, I just, I think it makes my life better. I don't know. I just don't, I mean, I grew up that way too. My dad and my mom, like, it's just yeah. like, it's instilled in me. And I think if I only thought about my fucking, I would just die if every picture I put out was like my own face. And mm -hmm. I was talking about whatever it is we talk about. I don't know, yeah. whatever that surface thing is like, I just would feel shitty about yeah. myself. So it's also selfish 
Well, I mean, sure. I guess you can qualify like that if you want to make it negative, Jen. <laughs> I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> There's, well, what, um, uh, who or what are you working with currently? Um, in those sort of like guidelines of giving back, are you working with any organizations or? Yeah, uh, yeah. What are you doing? Uh, I'm on the board of a great reproductive rights organization called A is Four, cool. and they fund grassroots clinics and organizations on the ground in every state Amazing. to try to you know fight for our fucking reproductive rights yep. as women. Jesus Christ! And they mm-hmm. also uh, work to reduce the stigma around abortion which Great. I think is very important. Hugely um, so. I love and rep for Black Women Lead out of LA, cool. run by Shannon Morton. She's fantastic. And they she does so much in that community. Um, what, who else? Oh, Healing Hands is a food pantry at which I work. Oh, awesome. I love um, Pants for Grace is a new one that I've started. And it's it's all about getting you a well-fit pant for every day of the week. <laughs> Thank you. And we're in sweatpants right now. So. That's right. That's right. And we're going to continue to keep you in pants. I appreciate it so much. Yeah. Uh, oh, Loveland Foundation uh, works to get therapy for Black women and children. Um, yeah. That's yeah. great. Very Those cool. Those are my taps. Yeah. Awesome. Um, we're going to take one last break. When we get back, uh, we will work together to see if we can give someone some advice on something that they're uh, struggling with. So we'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. Okay, Jen, let's see what question uh, you and I can answer together. Um, okay. Oh, my this, hair? Oh, Jesus. Okay, sorry. I love it. I think it's wild and wonderful. All right. <laughs> this is from... Um, I don't, I, I don't, I won't give people's names. I never, because I haven't asked for their permission to. So, uh, someone is writing that they're 25 and they're going through their first real breakup and it's terrible. Um, it's, you know, the pandemic and not just being out as much as they want. They don't know how or where to make friends or talk to people. Uh, and, they are looking for advice on how to deal with the breakup. It's a really amicable breakup, which is annoying since there's really no mm. one to yell or be mad at. So how does mm. one make friends? Where are they? Uh, what what do I need to find them? Where can I get the confidence to be better about making friends after this breakup? Uh, P.S. I'm I'm awful at using apps to find friends. Okay, so just one, just this is just really one question. Yeah, this is all one question about had an how to order my life. (laughs) Yeah, I I had a an okay breakup with someone, and now I'm looking around and I don't have anyone to talk to. How do I get myself back out there? Because I, I mean, I, I think a lot of people struggle with they're 25, like making adult friends once you're out of like institutions like school yeah. where it's like encouraged to make new friends is really difficult. Yeah, I think that's true. But first, first things first, Grace, mm-hmm. let's figure out how to make the breakup bad. Yeah. See, because the amicable, it's too, it's blurry. <laughs> yeah. It's always good to create a false narrative in your head that allows yeah. you to place blame yes. on the person. Um, yes. And, and their confusion with your misrepresentation of the events will yeah. further fuel your anger for them. <laughs> Honey, this is an episode of Dateline in the making, <laughs> and we can do that. Yes, yes, yes. You can maybe, you could slowly poison his food. Maybe, <laughs> That's true. Until he thinks he has a degenerative disease. <laughs> and then you could save him. <laughs> like kind of get him back to health or whatever. And he'll think uh-huh. you did that. You'll feel great. Yeah. Even though you know you poisoned him. <laughs> That's the first part. Yeah. Second part, I really, my best idea for this is to volunteer at a dog shelter. Oh. That's my true idea. That's a great idea. Because then you get to be around dogs, which is there anything better? No. And there, it's incredibly healing. Uh, if healing. you are a bit like emotionally torn up that these yeah. animals just love you. You'll be walking dogs. People will want to meet the dog. Even if That's... yourself is a little impersonal, they'll be like, what kind <gasps> of dog is that? And you can be like, I'm lonely. I mean, it's a pit bull. <laughs> That's a great idea. 
I, I do think, think it's a good idea. I think that's fantastic. Because also then you have the uh, philanthropic, like, uh, It's going to give you a good feeling. Yeah, exactly. it's going to give you confidence. You're going to be doing for others. And it also, dogs are like the great bridge between people. Yeah. And also dogs can tell, like they have that intuition that I think humans can cultivate, but not everyone has it. That idea that they know what's up and they know like how to be nurturing in a way where you didn't even really know you needed some attention. Yeah. And Uh, also there might be some great people at the dog shelter. You know what I mean? So true. And that'll become your so true community i think that's a great idea i also think in general if you don't have a dog facility like available like what you do by going to volunteering at just different uh different organizations i think you're going to meet people that are looking to give back and yeah and also it seems like if you're thinking that you're like under socialized coming out of the pandemic it's a great kind of like place to put yourself to practice your social skills again it is because everybody's gonna be weird <laughs> yeah, you know what exactly, i mean exactly. and you'll find that you're best friends with like some like 58 year old man named mr otis <laughs> and you'll look forward to seeing him you know how it is you know how it yeah. is oh that's it's, so wonderful and then you'll be like you your life will expand in ways you didn't even know because you thought it should be this one way and like yeah. you're like not fulfilling some self that you should be but yeah. like Let's open up the possibility. Very true. Uh, I don't know why this made me remember that I wanted to ask you about being around your uh, mom during the pandemic. Oh, and you, yeah. You guys, uh, too much squash? <laughs> yeah, fuck ton of squash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you go home for a little bit? I did. We, I, we went to North Carolina and we had to like take care of some family biz maybe in like uh late may during okay. the pandemic of last year we drove yeah. and didn't touch anything yeah. and um we got home and my mom and my dad like loved to garden and they grew up in the country and stuff and yeah. i kid you fucking not grace <laughs> we had squash it at every meal and it was <laughs> everywhere and in baskets just like <laughs> butternut zucchini <laughs> fucking acorn every class, and it was i was losing my mind <laughs> did they was this intentional or this was like they gardened and oops we have too much squash i think it was that but like you know in your heart of hearts if you know anything about gardening they do yeah that when you plant zucchini or squash of any kind you're gonna get too much <laughs> and they still over planted and then i had to suffer i was like yeah. this is poor planning on your part is yeah. now an emergency on mine <laughs> Yeah. Unfair. Oh, the symbolism. Yeah. Oh, I love and that. And my mom, you know, she's never acted in anything a day in her life. And she really? was so bossy. And acted <laughs> like she knew how to do stuff. We fought so much making that. <laughs> There's, I mean, for people that aren't really understanding what we're talking about, uh, Jen posted a video on her, was it just on Instagram or was it kind of everywhere? I think it was everywhere. I mean, I know it was on Facebook. Okay. Too. Yes. Fuck ton of squash that she and her mom offer some helpful um, advice on what to do when you have a fuck ton of squash. And look, I could not tell that your mom had never really acted at anything before. Don't say that. (laughs) Don't say that. (laughs) I don't need her to know. She's a star. It's uh, it's hard to deny. (laughs) Two minutes into the day, she was like, like, we had gotten like one shot off. And like, then we like, Moved to another location. She was like, Lord, how long does this take? And I was like, it's going to take all day, mom. We got to get like different tags. I got to edit it together, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then like two minutes later, she'd be like, well, if you're going to get it in the medium, I don't see why we can't. And I was just like, woman. <laughs> amazing. I don't amazing. come into your work. Oh, amazing. Oh, I love that. Uh, Jen, we've reached the end of the episode. Um, okay. This has been so lovely. Before you go, we like to give a little token of our appreciation to our guests. And that is a personalized horoscope from us to you that Melissa just sent you in the chat here. If you would what? like to read it aloud. OMG. Oh, okay. Dear Taurus, bull of the stars. <laughs> it may be in your sign to have some hoarding and overthinking tendencies, but it's time to let go of what's not actually important. And this includes all of your fucking squash. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) 
perhaps the universe is trying to tell you something. I don't know what it is. I don't it's know like what usually I mean. I'm like, oh, you know, horoscopes are su- pseudoscience and they're too general, <laughs> but that is very specific. Spooky. So spooky. Spooky, though. <laughs> now, Jen, where can people find you, find everything you're up to? Uh, I know you're not totally sure on the, the release of Claws, but where can they find you in the meantime? I'll probably be under a bridge in Midtown. <laughs> yeah. And if you just come into the city on the Q train. No, I'm... <laughs> I'm on um, Instagram at the Jen Lion, Twitter, mm-hmm. same. Um, yeah. Great. Yeah. And then be on the lookout for the last and final season of Claws to return yeah. to TNT. Yeah. Uh, this was so fun, Jen. Thank you for making time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Grace. It's such a pleasure. You're just a phenomenal force. Back at you. Uh, okay. Next time I'm in New York, I will definitely hit you up uh, and you can take me to the pizza shop. Or I, I dare, you. I <laughs> dare <laughs> you. All right, guys, we'll see you on another episode of Not Too Deep. Until then, goodbye. Too deep, too deep, too deep. Not too deep. Not too deep. Grace Helbig. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated. Producer Melissa D. Montz, edited by Shireen Lani Yunus. Post-production sound by Chris Henry and an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. 